Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here. Um, today I want to talk about the progression of Hashimoto symptoms over time um, and how how that can impact your, your blood levels and kind of how to figure out where you're at if you're in a hyperthyroid state or hypothyroid state and so forth. So um, what I want to do is I want to start off by by giving you this example here. And what, what this is, this is a... Um, a graph of a patient with Hashimoto's and they, these little blips uh, are her lab results and the pink ones represent her TSH and the blue blue ones represent her T4 so what you can see here is this is without this is over time so basically over a 15 16 year period and so basically we just look at um, what this patient's lab show each time she was tested and you can see here and this is without medication by the way So this is just this is just off-the-cuff kind of testing them as she goes because the standard of care for Hashimoto's as you know is kind of take a wait-and-see approach and that means let's wait and see in um, Let's just wait and see what happens to your to your thyroid and then once you have accumulated enough thyroid gland damage then we'll replace that that um, that lost gland or lost hormone with uh, level thyroxine of some sort. So that's a, this is this follows perfectly kind of that wait and see approach, which obviously is not ideal. Um, so you have here uh, the interesting thing that you can see here, and this is why I bring this up, is there are fluctuations in her labs over time, and you can see she has periods of hyperthyroidism in the sense that her TSH is essentially zero, right? And when her TSH is zero, you can see so you, all these little uh, pink or purple dots are down towards the zero end, and you can see her free T4 is up during these times right and then as soon as her free t4 drops then guess what her tsh goes up so you can see this kind of pattern of when one goes down the other goes up etc and what this is indicating is this is this what the, what does this mean for you this means that as a patient with Hashimoto's your your symptoms are going to fluctuate over time because she's not going to be feeling good during this time period of uh, well, this actually looks like it was just around one year, but the point is throughout this time period She's gonna feel pretty crummy, right? She's gonna have hyperthyroid symptoms, which aren't gonna be good and then immediately afterwards she goes hypothyroid So the question is why does that happen? And what kind of symptoms might you experience if that does happen? Um, so so first of all you have to understand that um, Hashimoto's um, Is a progressive disease, okay, and and it has you may have different symptoms based off the based off of the um, the spectrum of what your disease state so generally speaking so in this this scope can be put into three main categories the generalized kind of symptoms of Hashimoto's the generalized hypothyroid symptoms of Hashimoto's and the generalized hyperthyroid symptoms of Hashimoto's so let's start with sort of the general symptoms of Hashimoto's um, and the interesting thing is these are very non-specific symptoms okay and I'll, I'll go over all these with you but just to give you an idea and this is why it can be so difficult to, to diagnose and when you couple that with the fact that most doctors don't even check for TPO antibodies or thyroglobulin antibodies or whatever it is, um, they they may just look at your thyroid and say, oh well, it's 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 a kind of okay, so therefore I, you know you're probably fine. They don't even may not even necessarily bother to check those those uh, um, those antibodies. So this is why it's important for you to have an understanding of this. So first of all, general fatigue or sensation of being run down, just sort of a blah sensation, um, mild weight gain. This is just a, usually a little bit, maybe five to ten pounds. Maybe you just don't quite you know maybe maybe you're you think to yourself well you know I'm not exercising as much as I would I could have or whatever you know maybe just a little bit of weight gain but you but it's unusual for you right it's not it's not a normal amount of weight gain um, usually like a flat affect or a depressed mood just not again feeling like a blah not feeling like yourself not having the same um, pizzazz or spunk that you used to have mild difficulty with concentration or inability to, to focus not a lot just a little bit you know just like I said feeling a little spacey just not quite there um, some slight changes to your skin so, such as dry skin cracked lips dry brittle hair not a bunch that might concern you but to, to the point where you go get something checked out but enough that you're like you know this just this is doesn't this isn't right this isn't normal just a little bit mild constipation but again the kind of thing that you could blow off and um, say it's due to something else mild fluid retention especially in the face or lower extremities so that would be like waking up with a little bit of puffy eyes or something like that um, having a change to the quality of your voice typically like voice hoarseness or the sensation that your throat is swelling okay now I don't mean like your your trachea is being crushed I mean it just feels like pressure in the in the in the um, neck area uh, reduction in, in the ability to sweat is another one, um, just a little bit. And then mild joint pain or aches, muscle aches, just again, kind of goes with that feeling of just kind of feeling blah. Uh, mild to moderate changes in menstrual cycle, maybe just, you know, a couple days earlier, a couple days late, but just something that's unusual for you. So hopefully you're getting the picture here that these are just very nonspecific, very, very generic symptoms. And if you took any of those symptoms to your doctor, just like, well, you know, I'm just a little run down. He'd be like, oh, that, that's just because you're not sleeping that well, or that's just because of whatever, right? 
So it's easy to it's easy to be dismissive of patients who have these symptoms because they're just not that specific. And again, that doesn't mean it's okay or that that's the right way to take. But I want you to have that information. So what I what I generally say is if you're having you know several of these, like you know three to five of these, then you really ought to get your your antibodies checked. Now, presumably you know that you have Hashimoto's, but for those people who who may be watching this who who don't know that they have it or who who may suspect that they have it, okay, well that would be an indication that you need to check those. Okay, so that's kind of how it starts. But then, as you know, and as I kind of alluded to earlier. There's a progression, and that progression may go through hyperthyroidism or periods of hyperthyroidism and also period and or periods of hypothyroidism, okay? And so those can fluctuate up and down. It can be very confusing for, for, the, for the poor patient who's experiencing these things because all of these symptoms are just completely different, and you may go in thinking you're hyperthyroid, and he's like, no, your thyroid's fine, and you're like, what? I, I know this isn't normal. It just can be very confusing for the, from the patient. So let's talk real quickly about the kind of hyperthyroid symptoms that you might have. Now, realize, too, if we were just to talk from a general sense, a general sense of Hashimoto's, you would start with those generalized symptoms I just went over, the feeling of blah, just not quite right. You may or may not, but most do not, have episodes of hyperthyroid initially, okay? And then the majority of the time after that, after you've accumulated enough gland damage, your body isn't even able to liberate enough um, thyroid hormone to create, to create those symptoms of hyperthyroidism. So you basically go to hypothyroid symptoms all the time. So Tip, so generally what it'll go like is generalized symptoms, then hypothyroid symptoms over time, but it might go like this, generalized symptoms, a little bit of hyperthyroid symptoms, then progressive hypothyroid symptoms. So just put that in the back of your head. So if you, if you um, are experiencing hyperthyroid symptoms, you may experience symptoms like this. So hot flashes are episodes of heat intolerance, uh, mood changes are typically, uh, typically I would say on the anxiety spectrum. So that might be racing thoughts or uh, worrying all the time or just feeling a little jittery, just sort of on edge, you know, the kind of person that uh, easily spooked type of deal. Um, that, that's generally how I'd put it, and that's what I'm referring to when I say the spectrum. And again, jittery sensation or sense of too much energy, but it's it's not a good energy. It's like a nervous energy. And so that's what I should say, you know, you might be thinking right now if you're hypothyroid, well, I'd love to have too much energy. No, no, no. The, people don't like this type of energy. It's not the good type of energy. Um, fatigues are, are episodes of energy swings, which can go up and down. Yeah, and yes, you can get fatigue when you're hyperthyroid. That's a, a symptom of both hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. Difficulty sleeping, for sure. Um, and typically with episodes of insomnia, usually related to the racing mind at night and heat intolerance and such. You might get some facial flushing or sensation of warm, ex warm extremities. Um, another big one that I think most people present with to some degree is heart palpitations or sensation of a racing pulse. Even if you check your pulse, it may not be racing, but that's the sensation of having a palpitation. And then of course you may have weight loss or weight gain. Um, believe it or not, even when you're hypothyroid, you may just actually gain weight. So that's, you know, obviously not good news, but th that, um, that's the way that it can go. So that's those are the hyperthyroid symptoms. And you may or may not, I would say typically this is not normal, but but um, you may have this. Now, what is more normal is to go from those feelings of blah, you know, and then to go all the way to the progressive hypothyroid symptoms. And you probably know these, um, but these tend to be the like the initial symptoms that we experience, those generalized symptoms, but just worse, right? So so instead of having a little bit of fatigue, you have extreme fatigue or you have extreme exhaustion. Now now you know something's not right. Now you know, you, now now it's difficult to get out of bed or now it's difficult to go to work, stuff like that. It's 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 a progression of whatever existed pre, uh, initially, but now a lot worse. So same thing with weight. Now it's moderate weight gain. Now we're talking instead of five to 10 pounds, now you're 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds overweight over a usually six to 12 month period. So that is definitely not normal, right? You, you could you could pawn off five to 10 pounds as I don't know, being due to some other factor, but but when you gain 30 plus pounds, it's difficult to say without changing your diet or anything like that. That that's definitely not a normal normal sign. Um, the 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 skin and hair changes those progress as well. So we're talking clumps of hair coming out in the shower. We're talking hair thinning to the point where we can see your scalp. We're talking you know your hair is breaking in half. Just very abnormal things that you know for sure are not are not normal. And then of course the the um, extension of feeling kind of blah definitely alters the mood to the to the point where you now are on the depression spectrum meaning that it's now you're just down all the time now it's more than just feeling kind of blah um, you also you also may experience and usually you will to some degree our menstrual irregularities so that could be on the P, that could be things like PMS or PMDD um, fibrocystic breast disease endometriosis yada 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 all of those kind of uh, estrogen dominant like symptoms 
and then we're talking chronic and debilitating muscular pain or joint pain. So now it's more of just like, well, I'm not so, I, you know, it's beyond aching now. Now it's like if somebody touches you or pinches you, it hurts, you know, a lot. It, it's, it's not even tolerable or bearable at any point. And then, of course, the GI symptoms, they progress as well. So we're talking chronic and daily constipation as opposed to like, let's say you maybe go every two to three days. Now we're talking every three, four five days. Now it's also accompanied with gas and bloating. Now you probably have low stomach acid. So you have, you know, small intestinal bacteria overgrowth or small intestinal fungal overgrowth. And now you're starting to show the full blown signs of hypothyroidism. So the important, important thing here is number one, that the symptoms of Hashimoto's progress and change over time. We, you have to realize that. And number two, you want to make sure that you can catch these things early because if you can get treatment early when you're just feeling the sort of blah sensation, you're not going to go from five pounds of weight gain to 30 pounds of weight gain. Instead, you can kind of, you know, cut that down and prevent it from, from getting worse. So that's why you really need to know these things. And that's why you have to get treatment. And I have other, I have other, um, videos on how to actually treat Hashimoto's, which I'll put down in the, the link to the description below. But really, I just wanted to focus on these symptoms, how they progress, and what, what you know, what, what, how to identify what's happening to your body. Okay, so that's all for this video. If you have any questions, um, leave them below. Uh, I'll try and get to all those questions that you may have. Um, but otherwise, I hope you guys found this helpful.